morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Monday Mentor. I'm Jen Whitmer, and I help teams and leaders solve conflict, cultivate great communication, and create empowered teams where people are whole, work is a joy, and organizations can flourish. And so every week I come and bring either a some training or a fantastic guest, and I am a little fangirling about our guest today. I am so excited that Leanne Davey is here. She is somebody I have followed for a while as a fellow conflict specialist, and I've learned so much from her. And um, I just enjoy her immensely on LinkedIn, and I am so excited that she is here today. She has her PhD, and except that she says, I'm not fussy, and it's so true. Like She is just this lovely, relaxed person who has so much to offer us in the area of conflict. And so I am so excited to welcome Leanne. Leanne, welcome. <laughs> People always say to me, like at the end of a speech or something, they'll say like, you don't seem like you have a PhD. And I always go, "Does that is that because I don't seem smart? <laughs> like, no, you seem like friendly. I'm like, oh. I don't think those two are mutually exclusive. I don't think so either. Someday I really want my doctorate. I hope that doesn't mean I have to become fussy or you don't. unkind. <laughs> Just fight it. Just okay. go do it because it's great and we should <laughs> pursue things like that. And don't worry. You don't have to stop being Jen. Okay. That's good. Whew. Well, I'm glad about that. <laughs> um, so I always love to start and let people know a little bit about who you are. How did you get to this place where you're a speaker, you're a sought after um, workshop specialist and author, helping people with the good fight, which is the name of your book? How, how did you get here? Uh, okay, so we'll start with, um, I flunked calculus in first year university. <laughs> uh, and so... I found this course the next year to take to just buy time in organizational psychology. I fell madly in love and have spent the last 30 years studying how people, the psychology of work. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to working with teams as my, my specialty, I realized that most people it's not that I have to come in with a with a whistle and referee and throw flags for, for people having too much conflict. It's that most people are like me. They don't like conflict. And so I found this sort of spot between my own personal shortcomings and failings, which is that I'm conflict averse, <laughs> and what teams needed. And I thought, hey, I can do my self-development on the job. <laughs> So it's so it's like about a decade now that I've been really focused on the good fight. I love that. I love that story. And I identify with that so much on so many levels. One, and, and as I was promoting our conversation today, I was sharing that my dream job was really destroyed by conflict, but it was because we had a leader who was so conflict averse, we couldn't have it. And um, and it would come up in different places. And it was like, oh, that's so terrible, rather than, oh, well, how do we solve that? And so I'm kind of curious if you're watching, if you're here in the comments, let us know you're here live. If you're catching the replay, tell us you're here on the replay. <laughs> how do you feel about conflict? Like what? I didn't realize I was conflict avoidant. Honestly, so just a quick story. I didn't, because I didn't run away from conflict. I was just like, it's not happening. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That was my version yeah. of conflict avoidance. I was like, oh, it's just not that. Well, at least we found this and then move on. And I think we all have different ways of expressing our aversion to conflict. And there's a few people that are like, oh, no, get me in it. But the most, the rest of us, I think, shy away? Is that a, your experience? You know what? Here's an interesting thing. I was giving a keynote on Friday and I, in my keynote, I talk about being ready for emotions. One of the reasons mm -hmm. that some of us shy away from conflict yes. is that we don't want to get involved in uh, somebody else getting emotional, crying or yelling or whatever. And, uh, and this point came up about, well, but isn't yelling very different than crying? And crying is expressing vulnerability, whereas yelling is, you know, is is expressing sort of power. And I said, mm, mm. I don't think so. I think when people are yelling, so people who think that they're good at conflict, maybe, or maybe people we think are good at conflict or like conflict, it's just as vulnerable as anybody else. It's I don't know how to get through this constructively. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm vulnerable to not being able to accomplish what I need to accomplish unless I switch to this yelling. So yeah. it was a very provocative statement. We spent, a, the room kind of went quiet and then we spent some time on it. Um, and it, it was a really kind of exciting, interesting thing for me to think about. So I think even people who you might think are good at conflict or comfortable with conflict, they aren't. And their way of shutting it down is, uh, is to yell is to to try and make you back off. Yeah. They don't actually have to make an argument. Yeah. Food for thought. I think that's really wise. And I think there's also a, a kind of a, I don't know if it's a third person in there, but another str strategy I've seen people use is being the pot stirrer. Kind of like, I'm going to put that out there, but that means then I don't actually have to do anything. I can back right. away and I don't have any responsibility. I've just stated this thing and then everybody else is I can I can retreat back into the shadows yes and absolutely also an unhelpful posture into getting quite solutions <laughs> <laughs> although it, you know in some cases a team at least needs somebody like that because if there wasn't an instigator if there wasn't someone to actually just sort of drop the truth bomb, mm -hmm. then uh, it wouldn't happen. So, uh, you know, it's there's there's good and bad to that. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things I learned through my toxic work environment that and then led into me studying conflict is that I've come to believe that conflict is actually the way we not only problem solve, but build a really healthy relationship. So like when you get to a certain place where you're like, we're not having conflict, it probably means you don't either have a real relationship or nothing's getting done. Right. So how do you, how, when you come into a team, what do you see as this pervasive issue that makes people not have conflict? Why aren't we doing that on our team? Yeah. So um, I love the, uh, uh, it's not a quote, but but the line from Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, who talked about how evidence of humans needing to be harmonious and get along and cooperate to survive is, is comes from about 15,000 years ago, where they have a, a femur bone that had been fully broken and fully healed, which showed her that uh, that person had someone to protect them and bring them food for a minimum of six weeks. So she says, like, for 15,000 years, we have evolved to be people who want to get along and want to protect each other. So don't beat yourself up if you're not like, <laughs> to point it. Um, but on top of uh, that genetic kind of um, evolution to be harmonious with our in-group, we're also socialized. So, mm -hmm. you know, grandma tells you if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And right. people tell you to mind your own business and kind of look away or stay out of it if there's an issue. So there's, or of course the, you know, don't get into trouble, uh, the, the fear of speaking truth to power. So, you know, it, it starts 15,000 years ago, but <laughs> it comes right up to, you know, doing a 360 feedback and being told you're too direct. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot in our environment where we have not come to terms with the value of conflict. And so if you, like both of us, <laughs> are someone who doesn't like conflict, um, you are in a very normal starting place. Yes. Uh, and my work and your work is to help folks uh, get beyond that starting place and understand that conflict can play a very, very important role, both in uh, as a part of healthy relationships, but also as protection against unhealthy relationships. That's so interesting. I want to I want to kind of expand, particularly on that second point. And, but I think that just to pause to reiterate, we come by this honestly. Oh yes, it's like we like this isn't something that um, again the the shame around oh I'm just not good at conflict or run away at con you know. There is a component of that of, yes, if you improve your conflict resolution skills, being ready to absorb emotions, as you were saying, it, those things are all good, yes. but it's not because you're bad. Right. Just because conflict is inevitable. So here, maybe if I switch um, and, and use an analogy. So um, I hate exercising. <laughs> I really, my husband is an exercise person. Like he, <laughs> he loves it. He comes back from a, you know, a half marathon that he does on a Sunday whistling. Um, and, and, and I am just not. 
Um, I will never, I'm 51, pretty sure I'm not at some point going to change my opinion on that. So <laughs> I, I think about myself as like fitness averse, but it doesn't matter to my health or anything else, whether I like it, whether it's comfortable, all that matters is if I do it. So mm -hmm. I am not fitness avoidant. So I just say it's exactly the same with conflict. I am very confident. I am never going to start liking conflict. Um, not yeah. after this long, not multiple years after writing a book about it. If it was going to happen, it would happen by now. But yep. the key thing is uh, I am not conflict avoidant. So mm -hmm. if it helps to think about, you know, this silly analogy, um, think about it the same way as fitness. You don't have to like it. You just have to do it. <laughs> have to do it. It's true. It's like some people don't like to drink water, but your body's going to need something. Uh, <laughs> so I want, I think we, we talk a lot about um, in conflict space. I mean, I know I do about conflict as an opportunity. Like it's this <laughs> opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to problem solve, to connect with people. There's all these opportunities in conflict, but I think what we don't hear a lot about is what it does protect you from. So tell us a little bit more about what healthy conflict can protect us from at work and in our teams. Yeah, so the first thing, if we start sort of at an organizational level, healthy conflict protects us from risk. So, uh, you know, I talk often to teams where they're behaving in silos. Uh, one team isn't interested in the tension that's going to come from another team. So they just keep building their plan and keep getting closer and closer to the deadline and then kind of spring it on them like a jack in the box. Their plan <laughs> pops out right before the deadline so that they can say like, oh, you have to approve this. Like this, this has to be out. Um, and so when we do that, uh, we add risk in our organizations. Our plans haven't been vetted. They haven't had the benefit of people who have different expertise or see the problem through different stakeholders. Um, we lose innovation when we don't allow the, um, the the new ideas that come from opening up to the opportunity of conflict. Uh, those are a couple things. Uh, another thing at the organization level is that conflict is how we make hard trade-offs. Mm -hmm. And organizations that don't make hard trade-offs tend to dilute their resources across too many priorities burning people out, uh, not actually getting traction on any of those things. So there's big costs of avoiding conflict um, in terms of productivity. At the team level, when we avoid having conflict or, or lose that conflict opportunity, we have to do workarounds that can be very inefficient. We erode trust among team members. We let engagement slip. And then personally, when we miss the opportunity, we lose the chance to advocate for ourselves. We miss chances to, um, to, to get new opportunities, to, uh, to, to be treated in a way that helps us be more efficient and effective. So we can think at the organization level, at the team level, and even at the very personal or individual level, um, there are all sorts of issues that that come when we don't open ourselves to that opportunity of conflict. Yeah, it's such a, I think we don't talk about what's lost enough sometimes. Yeah. Um, because as I mean, I know that I don't often just because I like the positive aspects of it. If I'm going to be averse to something, right. I want to know why I should be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> like, What is this thing? So the exercise that we do when we work with teams is we have every single role. I just did this with a team this morning. We have every single role go around and talk about what is the unique value that only I bring to this table? Mm -hmm. um, who are the people who aren't in the room that I am I understand, I'm beholden to, I'm advocating for? And what's the tension I'm therefore obliged to put on these deliberations? When we can define that for every role sitting in a room, then we know what we're fighting for. Yeah. So I don't like conflict, so I'm not going to want to bring up or disagree or spot a risk or any of that until I realize the stakes. And when I go, uh, nobody else knows about this in this room. Nobody else is fighting for this stakeholder that I care a lot about. And so if I don't put this tension on these discussions, no one's going to. That framing for me, some things are worth fighting for. If yeah. I know what I'm fighting for, mm -hmm. it's much, much, much easier for me. Absolutely. And Emily's kind of saying that as well. Emily is also um, an organizational 
psychologist student. She has a master's. She won't let me say that she's a psychologist, but uh, <laughs> she- I'm not a psychologist in Ontario <laughs> either because I'm not a registered clinical psychologist. So, but yeah. she has- this I'm with you, Emily. Uh, these great OI experiences. And in the corporate world, it's like, if it's not normalized, if nice is normalized or getting along is normalized, we lose so much. We really, really do. Nice really gets me. Oh I am not God. a fan. I hate nice. I'm not Thank a you. fan of nice. I did a whole YouTube video on why nice people drive me crazy, right? Yeah. So I just, I use the word kind. Me too. What would be kind? Mm -hmm. uh, and many, many, many passive, superficial, lazy, self-centered things that happen uh, as a result of being nice mm. never happen if you're being kind. Absolutely. And kind is such an active place. It's such an active word. Yeah. And I think actually has more definition around it. And um, I could I could wax eloquently about that for a long time because I'm totally on that soapbox of I hate the word nice. Yeah. But when we're thinking about, okay, so somebody's listening and they're like, you know, they're okay, I, I don't want to be conflict avoidant. I want to learn how to get over my aversion and really normalize this on my team. Where do I start? Like, what, yeah, do that, do do that do? exercise. Do that, what am I fighting for exercise yeah. with your team? It's so powerful. I published that exercise in Harvard Business Review. It's available. I'm sure you can get, I don't know, three articles free a month or something. So yeah. grab it and just like in a team meeting, sit down and say, what is the unique thing each role brings? Mm -hmm. Who are the people outside the room that we're fighting for? And therefore, what's the conflict that I have to bring into the conversation? That's the place to start. Because okay. if you start with an understanding, because as you do that two things, you realize that, oh, I need to put this tension on the discussion. But the other thing you do is you develop empathy for what the other people need to bring. And so yeah. instead of experiencing that as friction, mm -hmm. like what a jerk, or I can't believe you didn't just love my plan exactly <laughs> the way I presented it. Um, so that's definitely where I start from there. Mm -hmm. You can learn better listening. You can learn the validation technique, which is a way of making sure you speak the other person's truth before worrying about your own truth. There's a lot of places you can go from there. But if I'm working with a team, the best place to start is with everybody knowing what they're fighting for and for what their colleagues are fighting for. That's so good. And I think the thing that I hear besides just empathy that that brings out is a level of curiosity. Yeah. What are, well, what are you fighting for and what is together? Like, how can we then work together to create this space? Because a team should be ideally going in one direction. Otherwise, they're just a work group of people. So like, yeah, the team is that. Yeah. So one of the things that that I <laughs> right up there with nice is uh, it makes me nuts. All of the metaphors we have of rowers, because, um, you know, the outcome is we're all supposed to get somewhere together, but we aren't pulling in the same direction by any mm -hmm. stretch of the imagination. We're pulling in very different directions, let alone that we're not in the same boat and also <laughs> we're not rocking the boat is not the thing. So, um, you know, for us, I use a different metaphor. If you think about it, that all your stakeholders are sleeping in a tent uh, and it starts to rain, you and everyone else on the team is responsible for, for spreading that tarp that rain fly out over top and you're pulling in very different directions to get that little plastic tarp spread is <laughs> with the right can... kind of tension yeah exactly yeah. the right type of tension you're trying to make sure that you know which way the wind is blowing and you're trying to get it in the right spot so that everybody inside stays dry mm -hmm. that feeling and when we do the exercise i do it telling this story uh about you know trying to get the the two small tarp because we never have enough resources right. trying to each pull in our own direction so that we you know yes we make it go as far as possible but also to get it in the right spot to optimize the decision overall. So we got to get rid of those rowing metaphors. They are not doing us any favors yeah. and instead kind of understand that, yes, I get to put some tension on it, but I don't own the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that tension needs to be dynamic and in response to all these other forms of value, all these other stakeholders that are also a part of the puzzle.
with that one goal of let's get everybody protected. Yes. Yeah. Like, because we all sleep that's in the, the goal tent. where we're going. We all sleep in the tent. Yes, absolutely. Oh my goodness. I want to talk to you forever. And we, <laughs> we are already like past my normal 20 minute time. Um, so I, I would just love for you to tell people where to find you, how they can connect with you. You can get Leanne's book here, um, The Good Fight. So tell me more about where we can find you and how we can connect with you. Yeah. So uh, leannedavy.com, uh, if you subscribe there, there's my blog has been going almost 11 years and that's one a week for 11 years. So there are more than 500 free resources for <laughs> you, including downloadable tools, conversation guides, all those things. Um, so subscribing there will definitely give you valuable information. And then I guess the other place worth calling out is right here, uh, at least for those who are on LinkedIn. Um, so I like to refer to my LinkedIn page as my couch. <laughs> and I love when people, you know, come sit down on the couch, engage with the questions. Um, let's get in the comment section and have a discussion. So probably either leandavy.com which also will lead you to my YouTube channel, uh, which has lots of things or LinkedIn. Yeah. I personally love your LinkedIn couch. Um, I <laughs> learned something. I enjoy the comments, not just with you, but the other people Everybody. Who are on your couch. I, it's really one of my favorite places on LinkedIn. You've created something very special in that. Thank you. And you are such an important part of the parlor. So uh, <laughs> like that midnight in Paris kind of era in Paris, right? It's, it's how smart the people are that are in that my LinkedIn parlor and sitting on the couch. So thank you for generously contributing to it. Oh, that is kind of you to say. Recording. I feel like I'm more lurking on the end. <laughs> Standing by the mantle. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much again for being here. I'm so grateful for you. If you are just happened upon LinkedIn today on Monday Mentor, we are here every week, Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern, talking about things that will really help you in your leadership and for your team. And if you want to connect with me, I am here. Please connect with me and send me a DM. Let me know how you thought about this. And we will see you next week. Thanks again, Leanne.